Hi everyone. The purpose of this webinar is to give you all a quick down and dirty of the IDA budget and the funds and the allocations with information regarding the purpose of the program, a little bit of the program background, how to complete the IDA budget request when you're given your allocations, as well as time and effort and documentation that we'll need. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about the program background with the IDA budget and funds. So the IDA is actually a grant, it's an entitlement grant that provides supplemental funds to ensure that all children with disabilities ages 3 to 21 receive a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. So that's what we call our FAPE. And this, these funds are from a grant that were given from the state based on the 611 regular IDA grant, and then we have what we call our 619 preschool grant. Here this describes or explains to you the regulations and the grants to the states and what the purpose of the IDA grant, again, is to provide special education related services to children with disabilities. So we combine these funds with our, with our state funds. We as a charter school district don't receive local funds, but it's to provide faith to our children with disabilities. So some of the permitted expenditures include the salaries of special education teachers and costs associated with related service personnel, such as speech therapists and psychologists. These funds may be kept in reserve. The states may reserve some of these funds for other state level activities, for a variety of specialized activities. So at the state level, they may reserve some of the federal funding um, for some activities for statewide functions. But it can entail things such as support and direct services, technical assistance and personal preparation, assisting LEAs in providing behavioral interventions and supports, improving the use of technology in the classroom. But this overall, our IDA grant and funds are to provide for students with disabilities above and beyond the general population and funds. Here's the regulations in terms of the allowable cost. So they must be expended in accordance with the, the provisions of the grant. They must be used only to pay the excess cost of providing special education related services to children with disabilities. So for you all that could mean speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, psychology services. And they're used to supplement and not used to supplant. Again, here are some more regulations in regards to the permissive use of the funds. So it could be service and aids, could be early intervention services, high cost special education related services, administrative cost management. It could be to purchase the appropriate technology for record keeping and data collecting. In this case, we often would see laptops for special education staff or, or laptops or Chromebooks for students. And it can be used to provide services as described in the IEP of children with disabilities that is needed to implement those case management activities. So the IDA allocation, where do most LEAs spend the funds? In our district, the majority of the IDA allocation and funds that you're given are spent on salaries for your special education teachers, for your speech therapists, your occupational therapists, your special education coordinators. We do see contractual services. Again, those would be services you have to contract out for to implement the IEP and provide services for students with disabilities. So again, this could be used for psychology services. This could be used for speech therapists occupational therapists, vision services, hearing services, those services where you don't have that staff on site. And then we do see some of the IDA allocations and funds being spent on benefits for individuals. So here again is another list of, ex of allowable expenditures, staff salaries and benefits. 
supplies and materials, equipment, or any other items necessary to special education program or pursuing to the IEP. So these funds must be, may be used for such expenditures and are reasonably necessary for providing those appropriate programs and meeting the requirements of the law. The next few slides are going to go over some ideas for what might be allowable or unallowable costs under IDEA. They're just some examples, but I think it gives a, a little bit clearer explanation of some things that you may use these funds for some things that you may not use these funds for. So for example, if we look at computers, so it is okay to use the IDA funds to, to provide computers for students with disabilities, but if you are trying to equip an entire classroom or grade level or school with computers, you can't then charge the IDA grant appropriated amount based upon the number of children with disabilities. So you can't buy for a large group or for the, the whole population and then say, well, this part is going to go just for those students with disabilities. Remember, it's all driven by the IEPs and the services that the students need as indicated by the IEP above and beyond the general education. Another example would be if you need an automatic door opener for a student with a wheelchair. That would be allowable as long as it's not being used just to bring the building up to ADA compliance. Benefits, you certainly can use it for benefits, but if we're looking at it for a district administrator other than a special education administrator, such as a coordinator or you might call them directors in your building, those are the only ones you can use the IDA funds for. You could not use it, for example, to say pay for an assistant principal at the seventh grade level even if they help support special education. So clerical support, you could use that as well, but if it's not for 100% of the time, so that's where you're going to have to document in your time and efforts and your semi-annual certifications how much time is being spent by that person on uh, special education. There's some examples in terms of, learn, of attorney fees, what could it and could it not be used for. Child fines, so they are allowed for identification, those would be allowable expenses. Any equipment such as security, so cameras and other devices, acquisition of cameras and other security devices are not in excess cost and therefore not allowed. If the LEA has decided to equip classrooms in a school or its buses and simply charges the grant appropriated amount based on the number of children with disabilities in the school, that would not be allowed. So the equipment is an excess cost when it's related specifically to the needs of a student with a disability in accordance with the IEP. It can be in a regular education environment or other related setting. If one or more children without disabilities benefit, that's fine but it couldn't be just because you wanted to equip the school with a security system. So this is what your budget request will look like when it's sent to you. It is in an, in an Excel spreadsheet, and this, these will be the areas in which you're asked to fill out. So let's go over how you actually complete this request. So you will receive an email to you will receive an email from me, um, which will go out to all the schools with the allocation amounts. You'll also receive the attachment of the Excel budget request that I just showed, and I will also include the IDA function and object code reference document for your use as well. To give you a little information in terms of how your allocations are determined, allocations are based upon the previous year's child count number. So for 2019, which is the budget request that will be coming out in a few days, that was based upon our 2017-18 child count number, which was in October, and then it's allocated out to you all based upon your numbers and the disabilities are weighted. So we use the same formula that the State Department uses when they issue us as a district our IDA grant and our fund amount. So we use that same exact formula that the state uses in determining what your allocation is. 
for schools that are coming into our district as brand new schools, you will also receive an IDA budget and allocation amount. However, your budget and allocation will be based upon the number of students with disabilities in your buildings as of the fifth day of school. So on day five, we will ask you to complete a document that indicates how many students with disabilities are in your school. And then from there, you'll be receive an allocation based on those numbers and the weighted formula with their disabilities. Any completed request, all complete, any and all completed requests must be submitted through Epicenter. Be sure each section is complete. If there are missing items, the budget request will be rejected and it will come back to you in Epicenter. Be very mindful of the due date that's set out forth in the email that when it's sent to you. Due dates are for a reason and the items need to be submitted by the specific dates. The reason for that is we have to submit to the State Department by certain dates as well. So when we get that deadline for the State Department, we then backtrack and set dates for you all so we can also remain in compliance with the state with submitting our IDA grant. They're not just arbitrary dates we select. I know sometimes it can get overwhelming and people forget and things happen, but I really need you all to be very mindful of the due date and to ensure that this information is uploaded into your epicenter when it's requested. So going back to that budget form and what it's going to look like, so here's actually how you will complete it. So keep in mind, at the very top, we'll have the name of your school and your allocation amount. Please, please, please make sure this is complete. Please include the name of your school and the full allocation that you were, that you were sent. On the left-hand side, you can see the amount requested. So here, you can divide up the amounts based on the activities, but be sure that the amount totals the amount your school was allocated. So make sure those on the left, all of those different items total up to your total allocation amount. In the description, please be very specific and include all the needed information. So for example, if there was a full-time special ed teacher that you were utilizing your IDA funds for, you need to indicate that special ed teacher's name, that it's a full, -time, it's a, it's a full FTE, and how much would be used for salary, and then how much would be used for benefits. If you have multiple teachers and you're paying multiple teachers out of your IDA funds, but they're not 100% of the time, please make sure you indicate what percentage of that allocation, of the IDA allocation is gonna to go towards their salary or their benefits. If you're using some of your funds for equipment or supplies, be sure to include a description of how that will be utilized for the students with disabilities. Again, we're asking very specifics here in terms of teacher names, their FTE, and how, how much is gonna go for salary and how much is gonna go for, for benefits. Please do not just list special education teachers. Be sure to list each name and the percentage of time that will be utilized for the uh, IDA budget. The accounting function and accounting object, those also must be filled out. Again, that document that's come, that will come along with your email will help you decide which code you need based on what you're requesting the, the budget to be used for. Be sure also on the bottom there is place for your principal signature or your school leader, as well as your finance officer names, that those are completed. The school leader can either sign it or you may type the school leader name in or the finance officer's name in as that is considered an electronic signature for us. But please make sure this is fully completed before you submit it, and then it's, it's completed and submitted on time. Based on those budgets, you may need or you will need to supply time and effort documentation. So if the federal funds are used for salaries, then that time distribution records are required. So we will require either semi-annual semi certification and supporting document or just a semi-annual certification depending on how much time is being utilized out of those IDA funds. So again, who must participate? Any employee working on a federal program, which would include our IDA grant. 
So if you have an employee who's working on 100% on a single cost objective or is paid 100% out of the 100% out of your IDA allocation, that employee will need to submit a semi-annual certification. It must be signed by the supervisor that has knowledge that that employee is working that and the employee. It's completed after the fact, so you cannot submit a semi-annual certification for reimbursement for dates that have not occurred yet. And make sure the account for the total activity that you indicated in your budget request, that's what your semi-annual certification looks like. So just to reify again, if this is for someone who is paid 100, who works 100% of the time on IDEA or special education, the dates must match the submissions. You cannot have a semi-annual for a date that has not occurred. So an example of that would be we have a semi-annual certification completed and signed for the time period of January 1st to June 30th, but that semi-annual certification was, was submitted to us on June 12th. So in that case, it would be rejected and sent back to you because the date would need to change to June 12th, not to June 30th, because if you're submitting on June 12th, June 30th hasn't occurred. So you can only request for time that has already occurred. And again, you're just certifying that Rocky Bullwinkle has worked 100% of the time for that time period. If you have an employee or you're using the IDA funds for employees with multiple cost objectives or more than one position, so for instance, that might be if a special ed coordinator is spending 50% of the time as a teacher and 50% of the time as doing that coordinator administrator role, then all of that documentation must clearly show that time difference. So documentation would include things like schedules you submit from the coordinator or the teacher, but you must be sure that that documentation matches the budget that you submitted to us and that percentage of time is clear. Oftentimes we get documentation and we can't tell what time is spent on what. So be sure in that documentation you clarify if the time is split in different roles. So here's what our semi-annual certification looks like. It is a Word document and it is edible. Um, again, so as you see based on the blue arrow that I've highlighted that those dates must match a submission date. So, and also the percentage of time. So this is to certify that Sally Jones has worked 100% of the time period from July 1st to December 31st. That's fine. Make sure you fill in the name and that it is actually 100% of the time. If it, again, if it is 100% of the time, you do not have to supply any other documentation aside from this. But be sure that if it's ending December 31st, you're not submitting this form to us on December 23rd. If you are, then you need to change that end date from December 31st to December 23rd. Otherwise, you would submit it, if you submitted this form on January 1st, it would be fine because December 31st has already passed. If you're in a situation where you are paying teachers partially out of IDA, then you need to make sure that the percentage matches. So if it was, this is to certify that Sally has worked 50% of the time period, during those dates on IDA, that's fine. Just make sure that percentage matches. If that's the case for those individuals not doing 100%, that's where we're going to ask for that additional documentation to show the time and effort that matches this and that that, that individual is actually doing those duties that amount of time. All the signatures must be completed on the form. We do need the signature of the employee. We also need the signature of the supervisor and the date that it's being submitted. Everything will be submitted through Epicenter. Any incomplete or incorrect submissions will be rejected. I know this was quick and just I just really wanted to give you all a little bit of background information, help you with completing the budget request as well as the time and effort documentation. So hopefully you found this webinar a little bit helpful. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me and there's my contact information on the slide. 
or you can feel free to reach out to Melissa Huey, who is our Federal Programs Grant Accountant. She and I work very closely together on these budgets and funds. Anything related to IDEA and special education program is with me, and Melissa and I work closely. So I hope this helps. Uh, I look forward to working with you all and making sure that you receive the funds for our students with disabilities and we continue to see great things in our districts.